All right, well, academic success in school depends on how well you study, especially when it comes to performing on those big tests. Joining us now with some great study strategies is Danielle Maley. She's the Clinical Director of Assessments from Chesapeake Bay Academy. Thanks for coming back. Good morning. Thanks this, for having me, Carrie. This is a topic that so many people can relate to, especially children with, you know, who have the SOLs coming yes. or, you know, just unfortunately, you just can't avoid that at some point you're going to be tested on what you learn, so you have to study. Absolutely. And preparing for those big cumulative exams can feel completely overwhelming, like SOLs, SATs, things like that. Yeah. So there are some things that you can do to help you, you know, defeat that test and feel confident when you go in there to take the test. Um, the first thing I would say is actually something you guys were talking about earlier, which is to plan ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, you really want to start studying as soon as possible, as soon as you know that the tests coming up and come up with a plan up how often you're going to study for how much time and break it down into smaller chunks that makes it much more manageable and also increases the chances that you're going to actually remember what yeah. you study um, some people may worry that if they study too far out they'll forget again mm -hmm. is that in your experience have you, have you found that necessarily to be true or have you found that if you get the information in in the right way it'll stay in Typically, if you really learn the information yeah. and, and get it in there, it will stay. Now, I wouldn't start studying for an exam, you know, six, seven, eight months out unless right. it was something massive, like a licensing exam for a medical doctor or something like that. Right. But typically, you know, if you know a big test is coming, if you can start studying three, four weeks ahead of time, that's great. Yeah. The other thing that time allows is for you to look through the material and say, okay, I understand this, but I don't understand this, and get clarification and help. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I always tell people is, you know, go back over your homework if it's an in-class exam. Go back over previous tests if it's an SAT or an SOL. Look at the versions of the tests that have been released and go through them just to get familiar with the structure of the exam, the way questions are worded, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and again, then you can go for help if you need it if you don't understand something about it. Other than uh, waiting too long to start studying, cramming the things yeah. that all three of us uh, talk, except Ariane, I think Ariane said she was the player. <laughs> Chris and I <laughs> fessed up that we were crammers. What are some other pitfalls or mistakes that people can make when they're studying? Well, one of the things that happens is people study for too long. Now, I know that sounds contrary to what I was just saying, right. but they try to sit down and study for three, four hours straight. That's too long to study because you're not going to really learn what you're going over. You're not going to remember it. So you want to study in small manageable, uh, manageable amounts of time, 20, 30 minutes, then take a break for five minutes, and then mm -hmm. get back to studying. Mm -hmm. um, it's important to build in break time, build in time to you know get a drink, get something to eat, things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the mistakes that people make. Another mistake people make is not monitoring what they actually know. There's something called metacognition, which is thinking about your own thinking and knowledge, and that's something you need to do throughout. You need to really monitor okay, do I really understand what I just read? Do I know, know what it was saying? Or, um, you know, am I confused? Well, a great way to do that is just by quizzing yourself, mm -hmm. writing questions in the margin of your notes, and going back over and, and asking yourself those things. Mm -hmm. So those are some mistakes. Especially if you're a college student, all that money you paid for your textbook, yes. write in it, <laughs> it's yours. Um, let's talk about test day. You know, you've mm -hmm. studied, hopefully, you've planned, but you're still afraid that you're just going to blank out when it's time to take the test. Yeah. Let's talk about strategies for the day of the test. Well, like they always say, get a good night's sleep, have a good breakfast that morning. Um, if you want to review your notes beforehand, you can. What I would suggest you review at that point is if you've come up with any acronyms. Um, an acronym is something like, ro you know, Roy G. Biv that helps you remember the, the colors of the, la the rainbow. Oh, excuse me. Or an mm -hmm. acrostic, which is like, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally to remember the order of operations. When you sit down and you get to that test, you want to write those things down immediately on a scrap piece of paper that you have. Uh -huh. um, or any formulas, anything that maybe you've memorized verbatim that you know you're going to need and you might forget as you go through, write that right away before you even look at the exam. Okay. So that way you have that to, to you know, use and reference. Mm -hmm. um, and then you, do, you, know, you go through, do easier questions first, leave the challenging ones for later, um, mark questions that you're not sure about to go back to things like that and just if you feel like you're starting to freak out stop take some deep breaths and try to you know regain your composure mm -hmm. so if there is a choice the, the night before between doing a little more study and I mean not not talking about the cramming but mm -hmm. just if your choice is um, another hour of studying or another hour of sleep what is going to benefit you 
Well, the, I would actually say split it down the middle. I would probably study for about 30 minutes and then get that extra 30 minutes of sleep. And here's why. Research has told us that when you study or read right before bed, you're actually more likely to remember that information. Oh. So that last 20, 30 minutes of reviewing your notes uh, might actually really help you in the end. Now, if we're talking about the difference between getting, you know, six hours of sleep or seven hours of sleep, you know, I, I would want to go for the, the more sleep. But it is important to review your notes at nighttime. Another tip, a good time to review notes also is when you're at the gym. Uh, research has shown that when you're exercising, you're actually able to learn and remember things a little bit better, which wow. is interesting. All right, so prop that notebook up yeah. on the treadmill. Any <laughs> truth at all to putting your notes under your pillow? No, no, <laughs> no you no. cannot learn by osmosis, <laughs> not yet. You know, with the iPad and technology, who knows? So. <laughs> right, there's hope. Thanks, Danielle. For more information, you can check out the academic blog School of Thought or give them a call or visit Chesapeake Bay Academy online. The number is 497-6200. The website, cba-va.org. Thanks so much. Thank you very much.